Hey guys, it's Blitzcrab back with more Genshin Impact. Today we'll be discussing about our newest villain Loli, Diona. I know a lot of people are wondering if they should be pulling for her and I have done a quick review on that in the other video so go ahead and check that out. But in this video I'll be talking about Diona in more details, her role, her strengths and weaknesses, her build and how she fits into a team comp. So maybe this video is better suited for those that already have a Diona and wondering whether they should invest in her and if so, how do you even build her? But also for some of you who are still on the fence about pulling her, perhaps this video could help you get a better idea of what she's capable of. Without further ado, let's get into it. Diona's role is very straightforward, she's a support healer. But the difference between her and all the other healers is that she can build a shield and that's the direction that the game is going towards the shield meta. And so naturally a lot of people ask the question, is she a good healer? The answer is she's not the best healer because her heal mostly comes from her ultimate which takes a long time to charge. But if you're leaving it to that, that's a really unfair assessment because her shield can be considered as a free healing buffer and in many ways that can be better than healing. The reason is because while you're shielded, you're also protected from being interrupted. It means that while the shield is up, Healing isn't even necessary, so even if her healing is poorer, the effective HP from your characters could be considerably higher due to her shield. Another reason to love her is that she's a really great shield breaker in this game. A charged E attack on a shield would break half the shield in this game, meaning if you have the sacrificial bow, you can do two charged attacks and the shield is gone. Later in the game, like in Abyss Floor 12, the most difficult content in the game, there will be situations where you'll be attacked by ice cages and icicles falling from the ceiling making it really difficult to maneuver and attack. Now in that situation, there's really no one better than Fiona, meaning she's extremely relevant to the most difficult content in the game right now. So that's all for her strengths and weaknesses, let's move on to the weapon choice. The best bow for Diona is, without contest, the sacrificial bow. The reason is because between tapping and charging the elemental skill, the charged version is usually better, but without the sacrificial bow, the cooldown is 15 seconds. With the sacrificial bow, you can break electro shields like nobody's business, and you can do nifty tricks like refreshing the duration of your shield before the shield is even gone. Also, casting the skill twice in a row means that you can get energy more easily and you can spam your ultimate even more. Now, if you don't have the sacrificial bow, the second best bow is the Favonius War Bow, which is luckily accessible for most of us. The reason is simply because the best substat for Diona is energy recharge. For Diona's artifacts, let's go over to the easiest one first, the main stats. Of course for flower and feather you'll always get the same one, but so for the timepiece go for energy recharge and then get HP for the cup and circlet. The reason is because her shield scales of HP and her role is as a utility support and healing so there's no need to focus on damage at all. And while it's nice to get a stronger shield if you choose HP for the timepiece, it's the only slot that can get us the energy recharge and Diona needs that more than a stronger shield because it takes a long time to build her ultimate. Now for the substats, honestly, as long as you can get energy recharge and HP, the other stats don't matter too much, so there's no need to stress about it. For the set choice, her best set is the Noblesse Oblige. Before getting there, I do recommend getting a 2 set Exile and 2 set Scholar, but if you can already get a 100% uptime on her ultimate, then go ahead with a 4 set Exile instead. The following will be a discussion on Diona's team synergy and it is the most exciting part for me personally. The two comms I'll be reviewing in detail would be team comms that have Razor and Chongyun as the primary DPS. Very important, I also wouldn't recommend Diona in any melt team comp because she's not great at applying the cryo aura. The reason is because her elemental skill's lowest cooldown is 6 seconds and her ultimate applies a cryo tick every now and then instead of it being a persistent field. So if you rely on her elemental skill, you can only melt your enemies every 6 seconds. If you rely on her ultimate, 1, it takes a long time to charge, 2, your fire hero would have to be idly waiting for the tick to come about before applying fire, otherwise Diona will trigger the melt for a very low damage. So at least for now I wouldn't recommend her to be in a melt team and let's move on to the Razor team comps. Now in a Razor team comp, the thing that I want to emphasize is the fact that Kaya is just a match made in heaven for Razor. Kaya is good at energy building, he can get his ultimate fast, the ultimate is an aura that stays with Razor, which is important because Razor tends to be very mobile. Basically, Kaya is mandatory for all Razor team comps. 
interesting because maybe some of you will pull Diona and realize that her E skill is also a 6 second cooldown just like Kaya's. So maybe a lot of you will be wondering if she can replace Kaya. But the answer is no because Diona's E can sometimes have a funky aim, it doesn't generate energy as well as Kaya, coupled with the fact that Diona's ultimate is a field which kind of restricts Razor's movement a little bit. It doesn't take as fast as Kaya, so it's harder to reapply the Superconduct debuff. And lastly, Diona struggles to get a high uptime on her ultimate. Now, having compared Diona to Kaya, let's compare Diona to the other healer choices. Before Diona, these are our options. Barbara, Bennett, Jean, Chichi. Let's take a look at Barbara. Barbara is a good healer, but she doesn't do much else. Barbara's water aura is nice because it follows Razor around and it can help create electro charge. But Razor's strong suit is in the physical damage, not reaction or elemental. As for Bennett, the ultimate is a great buff for Razor, but the downside to Bennett is that he has a very low elemental skill cooldown that doesn't persist, so it's hard to make full use of Bennett when Razor doesn't want to be switched out. Now Jean can give the Venera support unique to animal users but it's not that important for Razor because Razor's main damage is physical. Nevertheless, the Venera support can still play a huge role for sub-carry damage so it's not entirely worthless. The other thing is that Jean can help spread the Electro or Cryo Aura so more people can get the Superconduct debuff. Lastly, Chi Chi is usually the best healer option for Razor because her elemental skill lasts for a long time in Razor, it also follows Razor around. She's a good healer that also enables the double cryo elemental resonance with Kaya. But the two things that Diona has that even Chi Chi doesn't bring are the shield and the range roll. Anyway, let's take a look at the electro charged Razor team. You have Razor and Kaya with Sing Chu as the sub carry. If you bring Diona, Diona brings in a bow user, a healer, and a second cryo. This can be crucial if you're facing enemies that need a bow support, like when you're facing the Ruin Guard. Next is Razor's double electro team. You have Razor and Kaya with Fischl as a sub carry. Now, because Fischl is already a bow user, when you bring Chi Chi, you can still have a bow user. When the shield isn't necessary, this is probably one of the best team pumps for Razor out there, with the downside being that there is no other elemental damage other than Electro and the fact that Chi Chi is a 5 star unit. The verdict is that Diona is a highly usable second cryo hero and depending on the situation can be better or worse than Chi Chi. That's all for Razor comms, let's move on to Chong Yun. The first thing I need to say is that Sing Chu is to Chong Yun as Kaya is to Razor. All Chong Yun team comms will include Sing Chu. This is assuming that Shatter Com is the best comm for Chong Yun DPS. Unlike Razor, Chong's damage is mostly elemental damage. So unlike Razor's comms, Chong will benefit hugely from a Geo or Animal support. Now Sucrose is usually the top choice because Ventus ult makes it difficult for Chong to hit. Sucrose's abilities will also group enemies together in a field, making the skill quite similar to Chong's field. The only thing that Sucrose doesn't bring is healing, which is what Jean does if you don't have any other animal support. But so, unlike Razor's duo, Chong Yun sort of has a trinity here, which is Chong, Sing Chu, and Sucrose. But if you only have the three of them, let's see how they interact for Venera procking. First, you start with Chong because you want the Inemo to swirl Cryo. Then you switch to Sucrose, and then you switch to Sing Chu, and then you go back to Chong. But the horrible part of this is that by the time you go back to Chong, Chong's field is almost gone. Before the owner, there were two Cryo choices. One, Kaya, which is good, but you don't have a healer. Or two, Chi Chi, you have a healer, but the cryo application is a little bit awkward. Now, you have Diona who can apply cryo from range. So with this, the rotation is perfect for both Sing Chu's ultimate and Chong's skill. So you go with Diona first to Sucrose and then to Sing Chu and then to Chong Yun. I believe that Diona is currently the best healer for Chong Yun and is highly usable in Razor comms if you don't replace Kao with her. I hope you guys found the video useful. If so, please leave a like, leave a comment and subscribe for more Genshin Impact content. The last thing I say before I go is that for many characters in the game, it's usually better to start with the E, follow with Q, because the energy particles take time to travel, and it's usually done by the time you're finished with your ultimate animation. 
It's important to take these energy particles for two reasons. One, you get more energy while you're active on the field. And two, you get more energy if they're at the same element. So don't switch your characters out too fast if you want to be more efficient with the energy buildup. I hope this guide will help you guys enjoy Genshin better. And that's all from me. Have a great one guys. See you in the next one.